What is going on everybody? It's Stas here. Welcome back to another video and it feels great guys to finally be back in the United States filming these videos. It's been a while. It's honestly been a while. If I'm a little bit rusty today, I'm sorry guys. But in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down the markets, the NASDAQ, the S&P, the Dow Jones, kind of my thoughts heading into this week, what I'm planning on trading, and just a couple of things that have been going on that have been really swaying the uh, stock market and pumping a lot of fear into investors and traders' minds over these past couple of weeks so if you enjoyed this video feel free to go down below hit that like button drop a comment and let me know your thoughts throughout this video what do you guys think about the markets what are you planning on doing this upcoming week and if you guys want me to talk about any specific stocks or etfs in tomorrow's video on sunday's video where i kind of go over stocks that i'm watching and i take requests from you feel free to go down below comment those go to the discord chat put them in the call out section and i'll get to the them. So guys, the markets have been ridiculously volatile. I'm sure a lot of you guys already know this. If you've been out of the loop, let me show you guys what has been going on here, starting off with the S&P 500. So let's go to the 20 day one hour because a couple of weeks ago is where this madness started to begin. If we look here, you know, towards the end of July, everything was going great, right? Everything was going great leading up to that rate cut that we all were expecting. We weren't 100% sure that we were going to get it, but we were like 80% sure, right? We got the rate cut. We got that 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of Chinese goods and the market dropped guys we all know whenever there's tensions in the trade war whenever there's public tensions either on Twitter the media blasts it to everybody it pumps a lot of panic into investors and into traders and you guys can clearly see when that occurred, I think this day on the 31st of July is when we got that um, rate cut. The market sold the news, right? I was kind of expecting that. We talked about that in a couple of weeks ago um, in the videos back in July. Then the market popped up the next day and boom, we got that 10% tariff on $300 billion worth of goods um, you know, in China and the markets went down guys take a look at this red candlestick this is pure panic right here we dumped from three thousand and nine dollars all the way down to about 29.52 and that pretty much sent the market you know into mayhem over the next couple of days it dumped the next day august 2nd august 5th we kind of found a bottom here at about 28.20 to about 28.50 we popped up a bit you know every time the markets sell off aggressively you know there's going to be a point in time where it sees a breather right it comes back and that's what we saw here we saw a bit of a breather um, and we got the news actually that the tariffs were going to be delayed from September 1st which is the uh, the 10% that was supposed to uh, go into effect on September 1st we got the delay to about December 15th and let me tell you guys very quickly what those tariffs were originally supposed to be on so they were supposed to be on toys clothing shoes electronics including iPhones and yeah I have it on my notes here here, September 1st was the date that that was supposed to go into action. It got delayed all the way to December 15th, which is a which is pretty good, a short term relief. But again, it's not it, it, the, the tariffs are still going to go into effect, right? If, if December 15th comes, there's no deal in place. Which honestly, at this point, I doubt there will be a deal a deal in place. The markets are going to go crazy again once those tariffs hit. So I think this might have been the day or this day, um, you know, when that. Um, the tariffs got pushed back. The markets took that very positively. I think the Dow was up like 500 points that day. And then uh, we popped up. We saw a bit of a resistance here at 29.30 from the 8th of August. You guys can see we hit 29.30 roughly. On the 13th of August, we hit that same level. We dumped heavily from there as the, I think this is the day the yield curve inverted again, guys. And if you guys don't know what the yield curve is, the inverted yield curve, take a look here and Investors are spooked by a scenario known as the inverted yield curve, which occurs when the interest rates on short-term bonds are higher than the interest rates paid by long-term bonds. What it means is that people are so worried about the near-term future that they are piling into safer long-term investments, right? So on Wednesday, let me just pull up my notes again here, guys. On Wednesday, we saw the 10-year U.S. Treasury note 
note, on Wednesday, briefly traded below the two-year note, marking an inverted yield curve. And this is known as a lagging indicator, guys, meaning that when the, when the yield curve inverts, you know, we're not going to be in a recession the next day, right? What it usually does is when the yield curve inverts is it says there's a recession coming in the next coming months. It could be a year or two years, right? Previously in 2008, when the U.S., uh, when, when the yield curve inverted, the markets actually saw a recession about, I think it was like 20, 22, 24 months after the yield curve inverted. That's why it's known as a lagging indicator. So now that it's inverting again, you know, this could be sending us signals that we might be in a recession in 12 months, 15 months, 20 months. And that's why, you know, the markets are dumping. That's why there's a lot of fear because this indicator, this lagging indicator is very, very accurate in predicting the recessions, you know, in the U.S. economy. So that is stirring up a lot of paranoia a lot of panic and a lot of fear in the markets as of right now, guys. And in my opinion, I honestly think truly, guys, that the markets are going to continue to be volatile. They're going to continue to fall in the short term here in the next two, three months. You know, as we do get closer to the November, December months, if those tariffs go in place, I just think there's going to be a lot of mayhem. But when there's mayhem, guys, there's a lot of long-term buying opportunities. And you guys know, if you've been following the channel for a while, I'm a long-term investor as well as a swing trader and a day trader at times too. So when we're dropping a lot of volatility, I like trading volatility ETFs like TVIX, UVXY, market ETFs like SQQQ and TQQQ. And I take those profits as the markets are falling and I load them into companies that I believe in long-term. And I like to hold those companies as long-term investments, right? That's kind of my strategy. And I'm sure a lot of you guys, um, you know, really do similar things there. So let's just look very quickly now at some more resistance and support levels on um, the S&P. So you see... 2950 is a clear resistance. Again, we kind of got top there, double top at about 2930 to 2940. A good sign that I am seeing here is 2840-ish. <coughs> Excuse me, 2830 roughly. We saw a double bottom there. So for more selling to come, we need to see that technical break below 29 or rather 2840. And if we do break that level, guys, you know, we could be going down to take a look here 2810. We see 2810 was a resistance back in uh, February of 2019. It was a support back in May. It was, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, right? Support back in May, resistance back in February. If we break that point where we double bottomed, this is a very likely, it's very likely that we go to about 2810. And if we break 2810, guys, that's going to be very, very ugly in my opinion. We may be going down to 2735. You guys can see 2735, 2740. That was a resistance back in February as well. In the beginning of February, we broke out of that level, making it a new support. We actually retested that level back in the beginning of June before hitting all time highs. And yeah, guys, that's pretty much it, right? We break down these levels, we break into 2700. That's where I'm going to be looking, 2737. And let's go quickly to the one year, one day, so, so we can see if I'm missing any spots here. You know, Take a look here, guys. You know, we may be going down again 2730. If we break 2730, that's going to be quite ugly at that point, guys. We may be going down to 2640. And this this is like worst case scenario, right? In my opinion. Worst case scenario, we we thrash through these levels. We start to break down into 2600, 2500, 2400, and maybe see a repeat of the past December, right? You guys remember from October to December of 2018. This was a point in time when the markets were getting murdered, right? This is a point in time where I was actually buying up a lot of stocks that I believe in long term, and I made a lot of money on those stocks, right? 20, 30, 40% in some of those positions. So let's take a look quickly here at the Dow Jones Industrial Average. It's kind of in a similar spot. If we go to the 184 hour chart very quickly, you can see here we did find a support 
right around 25,400, which actually was an old resistance back in February. We broke out of that, making it a new support. We double bottom there back in March to about April. That's a very good sign. We popped up. We double bottomed again before breaking it back in May, right? And then we hit those all-time highs, and now we're starting to break below, um, you know, the $26,000 level, as you guys can clearly see. We're trending right at the resistance under 25,800. If we get rejected there, this upcoming week, we start to fall down. I'm looking at 25,400 to retest again. And if we break that, guys, again, it's a very critical support. We may be going down to, let's say, this level right here. And you guys can clearly see that's about $24,700. And if we go to the uh, trend line tool very quickly, that's a probably a couple percent drop from that break right there. That would be a 3% break or drop rather, if we were to break 25,400 and go all the way down to 24,700, which again, guys, with the turmoil in the markets right now, I think that's very possible here in the short term, in the next month, two months, three months. And if that does end up happening, I'm going to be trading these volatile ETFs, vol uh, 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 what's it called? Um, the ones that trade on the VIX, like TVIX, like I talked about a couple of minutes ago. And I'm going to take those profits and funnel them into long term positions that I believe in. So Dow Jones, that's what I'm looking at right now. Really that 24,700 level is strong and especially that 25,500 level, extremely strong here on the Dow Jones. And if we go to the tech heavy NASDAQ guys, the tech heavy NASDAQ, take a look at this one right now. You guys can see based on this trend line, 7,500 ish is a very strong support right now. You guys can see it was a resistance back in uh, March. It was a resistance back Back in May. And it was a resistance back in June. That's three different spots where it was a resistance. And when we broke that level to the upside, that's when we hit that all-time high at about 8,051. 8, and now that we broke down, we broke that 7,500 level as a support, right? It's a new support. That's a very technical break. We are a very key technical break there. We sold off all the way to 7,200. We shaved about 9, 10% off the NASDAQ in the month. Um, this was like a couple weeks ago, right? From from the end of July, pretty much, um, you know, five, six days, 10% shave off there. And then we popped up above the resistance 7,500. We, we, uh, we successfully held it on the 13th as a support. We popped up to a higher high. We were trying, right? We were trying to reverse and break out, but we got hit by that 180 SMA resistance. We dumped. We kind of held 7,500 again as a support, which is a good sign. And now we're kind of trading here at a lower high from the previous and we're still technically in a descending pattern right here right you guys can see it La high here lower high and this could be a lower high if we do end up dumping so this upcoming week guys i'm watching 7500 right and if we go to the drawing tools again take a look at this you know, some of these other levels that I'm going to be watching here are going to be 7,430. You guys can see we held that level this past week. If we break that level, another key spot here is going to be at around 7,300. We, we uh, held that as a support back in March. We held that as a support in the beginning of May. And we again, we, we sold off to that level a couple of weeks ago, really about 12 days ago at this point on the 5th of August. So watch that level, guys. Very critical here on the NASDAQ. NASDAQ, and things can get ugly, guys, right? We know that when the markets are getting hit, when the markets are volatile, typically tech stocks take the biggest hits, and the NASDAQ being a tech-heavy index usually goes down the most out of the three indexes that we track on this channel, which are the NASDAQ, right, the S&P, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So that's pretty much it in terms of the markets, guys. Inverted yield curve, trade war, tensions, global economy, slowing down. All of these crazy things are going on. I expect a lot of volatility here in the markets coming up. So let's quickly take a look at gold. As the markets are volatile, gold has been climbing and climbing and climbing, right? And if you guys watch my video, like, I think it was like a month or two ago at this point, we talked about this level on gold, a long-term resistance on gold, if we can get it here. I think it's on the 20-year, one-month chart. It's at about 1550, right? We literally talked about this level 
level. If you guys remember, drop a comment down below. But gold, when it was trading at 1420-ish, when we were breaking out of that resistance here, I was saying, you know, we could fill this gap, right, up to 1530, which happens to be an old support, now a new resistance, especially if the markets get more volatile. And the markets got volatile. People view gold as a safe haven, right? Although I don't really view it as an investment. I really view it as a hedge against, you know, the dollar, the economy, when things are going crazy, I kind of view it as a hedge. And people have been flooding to gold. It's clearly obvious here, right? The price has been going up, up, up. And at this point, we're at that resistance, right? We, uh, I think we almost got to 1550. I don't know if we got there exactly. Yeah, we did. Take a look, guys. Really, it's 1546, pretty much 1550. We got hit there. We're consolidating at about 1515, which is a strong support here on gold. So I'd be heavily watching gold right now. You know, if we break 1550, right? If we break 1550, guys, you know, based on previous prices here, you know, I can't really seem to determine a, a, a resistance here, but um, mm, maybe like 1700, that would be pretty crazy if gold did get to 1700, but take a look guys, you know, that is really the potential in gold right now, you know, if we break 1500, hold uh, 1550, hold that as a new support, we can really be filling the gap up to 1700, and in times like this, you may be looking at the RSI, oh my god, it's overbought, you know, when in times like this guys, you know, when the markets are volatile, when the news is really pumping panic into, uh, into investors and traders, a lot of these indicators go out the window, right? It doesn't really matter if the RSI is overbought, oversold, right? You know, I'm sure the the RSI on the S&P was extremely oversold in this circumstance or in this instance here, right? When we dumped, I'm sure the RSI, you guys can clearly see it, was very oversold, right? Does that mean since the RSI is oversold, you buy the dip? Of course not, right? When the markets are in panic mode, when there's trade wars, inverted yield curve, all these different things indicate go out the window, guys, right? You know, we dumped the next day, the next day, the next day, although the RSI was extremely oversold. So, that's pretty much it, guys. You know, in tomorrow's video, I'm going to be talking a bit more in depth on what I'm personally looking to trade. But just to sum it up very quickly here for you guys, these market ETFs are what I'm looking to trade this week. TVIX, if you guys have been following me on Instagram, go follow me there at StaSurfest. I've been posting some profits on Instagram. I've been trading this one like crazy, right? This is a volatility ETF. It goes up whenever the VIX is going up, whenever the markets are dropping, and when the markets are very volatile. I've been trading that. SQQQ, which goes up whenever the NASDAQ is selling off at a 3x rate. I've been trading this one as well. And I see a lot of opportunity in these, especially since Friday, yesterday, we had a green day, right? We had another one of those excuse me, green days where you know the markets kind of needed a breather. So let's say if we dump again. Monday, Tuesday, these have a profit open, right, a window of profit open right now where we can really capitalize if the markets continue to dump. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, feel free to go down below, hit that like button, consider subscribing if you want to see further content from me, and don't forget to uh, drop a comment down below on any stocks, ETFs that you guys want me to talk about in tomorrow's video. And if you guys want to join the Discord group chat, Facebook group, all of those are 100% free, link down below as well as my Instagram and Twitter if you want to be further connected. So I'll catch you all in the next video. I appreciate all of you taking your time to watch this. As always, I love you guys. Peace out.